Hello everyone, welcome to Odin School. Today in this class, we are going to learn about a couple of very important topics in Tableau. When we speak about Tableau, first we will have to understand why Tableau is essential and then we will go on to understand what is uh, what is our agenda today and then we will see each and every topic with hands-on experience, uh, hands-on, uh, you know, uh, practice. With that said, let me quickly ask the first question. Why should someone learn Tableau? Tableau is simply nothing but a data visualization tool helps people convert the raw data into some sort of, some sort of visualization. I can create any type of visualization basis the requirement that I have. Say for an example, you generally have huge amount of data in business. Even in real time, if you, if you take your bank statement for an example, you will have a lot of transactions happening to and fro uh, to your bank account, which cannot be understood unless or until we, uh, you know, you convert it into a format in uh, as a visualization or aggregated something like that. Other which ways, it becomes really tough for anyone as a human being to understand what is lying inside the data. The concept of visualization is simply nothing but creating or converting the data uh, you know uh, which is in the rawest format it can be number or it can be text or dimensions as well but as many numerical values that we have it becomes really essential it becomes easy for us to generate a chart out of it so that is the idea behind uh, creating visualization even in any business if i wanted to know what is the scope of uh, you know, what is the scope that I have in terms of building a particular, uh, you know, uh, building a particular uh, branch or if I wanted to say for an example, I wanted to understand where is my business booming, where is my business is not growing rapidly and what is happening in my business. With the raw data, we will not be able to understand this or digest this. So what we will do is we will simply convert things into uh, visualization through which we will be able to understand what is the control gap in my business, what is the learning gap in my business, what is the uh, employee who is performing better. All those things can be understood with the help of, uh, you know, with the help of uh, data visualization. That's why learning Tableau becomes essential in both personal as well as professional life. Now, let me quickly introduce about Odin School as well as about me. Odin School is a technology upskilling platform. They help us continuously acquire new skills. Their motto is to stay skilled and stay ahead. Talking about me, I am Gautam Kumar Jayachandran. I have six plus years working as a senior data scientist. I have worked with several technologies uh, starting from Excel, uh, SQL, Tableau, Python, Machine Learning and Alteryx. And I also work in several domains. The current domain that I work, current work is financial. First, let's see what is going to be our agenda. The agenda for the day is going to be about learning about the different types of joins that we have in Tableau. What are the different types of joins that we can perform and what are the advanced charts that we can actually uh, generate using Tableau. In Tableau by default, it gives you the option to generate 24 charts. But what if I wanted to create a chart that is not existing in my uh, not existing in the uh, uh, in the selection pane in the show me pane actually how we will be created and what are the different types of charts that we are going to create first let's get into inner join now let me quickly give an introduction about joins joins are basically very powerful and very essential in both uh, database concepts as well as any other data wrangling techniques because Generally, our data is present in several files. No data is present in single source. So when we have data present from multiple sources, how can we join those data sources? And what are the different types of joining mechanisms or uh, concepts that I can have in order to perform a right type of joining? So, say for an example, from in one, uh, one case, you might have to join the contents that are present in both the tables. In some case, you might have to, you might want to join the contents from both the tables, but only the matching values. So that might be user criteria. Let's see what are the different chances or different types of joins that we can perform in order to achieve a certain output. We have to create this. 
assume this is my table 1 if I wanted to perform join on this this is my table 2 and then I'll draw the same thing for few more examples also there are four types of joins that we are going to learn in tableau let me explain everything with a demonstration a Venn diagram helps us understand it better Venn diagram here now let me take something lighter here yeah. basically inner join the one that I'm trying to do here is inner join the next thing I'm going to do is a left join a left join and a right join and a full join kindly bear with me for the pole diagram but the uh, just let's focus on the concept here yep we can also you know, I don't want to do this I'll stick with this that is my left join let's talk about right join here then let's talk about full join or an outer join let me explain everything with theory as well but for now I'm just trying to draw up draw some diagram kindly bear with me for this yeah so in this case if you see okay I know it's the poorest of the diagrams but the concept is what I'm trying to explain here so we can exclude that yeah, okay in this case this is inner joint inner join is simply nothing but returns only the matching values from both the tables that is what an inner join does the role of inner join if only both the values are present in both the tables if the values are present in both the tables then only it will return us that particular value other which ways it will not return any values to us that is what an inner join does just a second perfect then the next thing is left join left join is basically a concept where it will return the complete return the left table completely also what it will do is it will try to see what are the values that are commonly present in the right table also along with the matches from the right table so so this is what a left join does a left join simply returns the entire content from the left table as well as values from the right table that are matching in the left table Whereas a right join does exactly the same thing in the right side. It basically returns the complete left table, right table. But it will also uh, return the value that the along with the matches found in the left table. This is what a right join does. A full join. A full join is also called as a outer join. Full join slash outer join. This full join, what it will do is simply returns values from both the cases. From both the tables, whatever values that are present, it will simply return us everything. These are the four different types of joins that we can actually perform using almost all the database concepts, even in uh, uh, in all the databases, even in Python, even in Tableau, Alteryx. In all the cases, these are the four types of joins that we can perform. Now let's see all these four types of joins 
with the help of uh, a table let's draw two tables and then try to understand how this is going to be uh, explained i'll just close my altrix looks like i have very powerful applications running in the back end i'll just close one of my application and then i'll create two tables to explain this I'll say employee. Uh, what I can say is employee ID. Okay, employee ID. Name, age, ex experience. All of them are maybe this signature is there. So in real time, what happens is when you join a company, you are not, not just a company, whenever you join any particular organization, whenever you do any task, your data is stored. Agree? If you join a college also, your data is stored. But your confidential details, your personal and sensitive information will not be kept in the normal table where you have demographical information. So in that case, what happens is when the user has let me have only five entries i'll draw this a little wide excuse me this is taking so much of time Okay. okay, let me just open this one more time. Now idea is when you have data sensitive information separately present in a different table and normal user information present in a normal table. Now in that case, what if you wanted to perform a operation where you need to generate or identify what will be the salary for all this uh, information that, that we are seeing here. Say for an example, I'm going to create information for all the employees now. Let me just format this nice and clean. Okay, employee ID 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. B, C, D, and E. Age is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Experiences 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Software developer. Uh, ML engineer. Software developer and then I can have machine learning engineer and machine learning engineer perfect. So Assume this is the table That a company is having regarding the employees that are working for they are who are working for that particular organization But these are demographic information just the user information no sensitive information is present in this case no contact details are contact details is present their salary breakdown is not present and none of their sensitive information is present in this case what if you wanted to uh, you know perform an operation that will retrieve them the salary now there are four types of day four types of uh, you know uh, joins that can be performed on top of this table through which we will be able to generate different types of output even though we have only one table now we will create one more table which will have the sensitive information and see what four types of joins are going to retrieve us as output let me create uh, the columns accordingly salary it can be anything here in this case One, two, three, four, five, uh, 25, 000, 35, 000, 45, 000, 55, 000, 65, 000. So basically your salary information, the customer, the employee's salary information is present in a different table. Let's see what happens when I perform different types of joints. First, let me perform inner joint. Maybe what I'll do is, 
I will not have the employee ID 5 in the employee salary table. This employee is yet to join or yet to accept the offer. So we will not have salary for this particular employee in the employee table. See what happens when we perform a inner join. Perfect. This is for inner join and then I'll keep the same thing for left join. Then we will have a right join. And finally, we will also have full join. Perfect. Inner join, left join, right join, and full join here. This is full or outer join. This is going to be a right join. This is going to be left join. Now let's understand how the data is going to be distributed in all these types of joins. In inner join, what the machine will do is the machine will retrieve as values that are commonly present in both the tables. In both the tables, if you see 1, 2, 3, 4 is the, are the only employees, employee IDs that are commonly present. So whenever we are join, trying to join two different tables, we need a common column through which only we can join them. In this case, employee ID is my common value. So what happens is machine will be retrieving me only these four line items along with the salary for these four employees. So what happens is we know the employee name is uh, employee name for the ID one is EA and he is of 18 years old. He has only one year of experience and he earns a salary of 25,000 INR. So this is what an inner join does only the matching values 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Here also we have only 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 5 here in the left table and 6 in the right table, but they do not match. In that case, it will not retrieve us the information. Whereas in a left join, what the machine does is machine simply retrieves all the information coming from the left table. The entire left table will be retrieved. Just a second. The entire left table will be written. However, if the machine does not have a value for that in the right table, these four employee IDs have salary in the salary table, but this employee ID do not have any salary information. So what machine does is machine will retrieve us a null. Okay. This is what a left join does. Talking about right join, the machine first what it will do is it will return me the employee IDs like this. The entire right table will be returned. First thing that what it machine does is it will keep the entire right table. It will not break or it will not try to map this with anything. First it will return the entire table. Then it simply tries to produce the results from the left table for only cases that are matching. So in this case it is actually matching for these many cases but for the employee ID 6 we do not have any information. So what the machine does is again just like how it worked in uh, left table it will simply retrieve us the null for name age and experience these three columns do not have any value for the employee id 6 hence the salary salary and employee id will be returned but all the information coming from the left table will be null let me color this so you can distinguish between the output but whereas in a left table only Only this will be null since we do not have information, salary information coming from the right table. Whereas a full join works a slightly different case. Now what the full, full join does is first it will take the entire left table. So wherever the values are matching it will retrieve the values appropriate values for us and then what the machine does is for values that are not there in both the left table and right table it will simply produce a null for us so basically 
a full join is a replication of uh, both left join and right join. So what it will simply do is it will union both left join and right join to produce as a full join. If you see here in uh, in left join we have only one null. In right join we have four nulls. In a full join we will have five nulls, which includes both the join types. So these are the four different types of joins that we can perform in real time in Tableau as well. But here there is a concept of one to many and many to many. That is something that we need to know. What is the concept of one to one and one to many and many to many? One to one, many to one and many to many. So what happens with one to one is exactly the above case. I will have one instances, one instance of employee ID in my left, left table, the same one instance of employee ID in my right table as well. In both the cases, we will have same number of times an employee ID present, only one time. There will be no duplication of the primary key concept here. The, uh, when I say primary key, it is basically the column that actually works as the bridge between your first call, first table and second table. The same column in the second table is considered as foreign key. So this primary key and foreign key will not have duplicates. That is when one to one join can be performed. That is exactly what we have done here. There is a many to one concept. What happens is, say for an example, uh, there are multiple people with two years of experience or four years of experience or something like that. So in this case, there is duplicate. Assume I'm, I wanted to join this left table with the right table with experience with experience column. What happens is in my second table, I might have only one instances of uh, uh, based on experience. I'll be having salary. So simply I'll change this into experience. So for one year experience, give me give them this for two years, this three years, this four years, this and five years, this. So in this case, what happens is in my second table where I have a mapping table, I will have only one occurrences for the primary key that is looked up from the left table. In this case also, this is fine. Many to one is also fine as long as we have unique in one table, either one of the table is totally fine. Here one table can have duplicates, but the problem comes when you perform a many to many join. Say for an example, you have two salaries for two years experience based on the designation and two salaries for four years experience also based on the designation. In this case, your experiences also have duplicates. Your experience from the left table also has duplicates. Experience from the right table also will have duplicate. This actually causes a problem because what it will generate is it will generate something called as Cartesian product which is also called as cross join. What does a cross join does is, uh, let me show you this. Okay, what is the table here? We will take this table down and then I'll show you what does a cross join does. This is my second table. So what does a cross join does is, simply copies everything for every line item in the experience. So for 25,000 salary, it will be multiplied first. This is not very logical. And this is something that we don't have to use as well. Then for the next salary, so what it simply does is it will take the entire content in the left table and multiply it with the first value in the right table. Whether it is matching or not doesn't really matter. It will take all the values from one table and uh, multiply it with the, uh, multi when I say multiply, it will provide values for each and every row, the same value in the second table. Now the second line here, it will be 35. So whenever you have a table of size five, in my first table size is five. When I say five, five rows. Second table also has five rows. So what happens is it will generate as 25 rows. So five into five. 25 rows will be my output. 
when we perform a multiple join uh, when i say mul multiple it is many to many join so don't perform a many to many join uh, performing many to many join will not give you the right or desired output so you must be very careful when you are performing many to many join in very rare cases we will use this say for an example if i wanted to know the permutation combination of a particular product being sold in the market then i can use it but other than that i cannot use this for other cases very very few cases we will use cross join which will generate us this many to many operation see here we have 25 line items now this is exactly what a cross join does this concept is called as cardinality when i say cardinality it is simply nothing but what is the type through which you wanted to create a relationship between two tables the primary key and column key do not have duplicates in one to one join whereas in a many to one join yeah any either one of the key either it is it can be uh you know primary key or it can be foreign key either one of these keys will have duplicates in it in a many various in a many to many join uh there will be duplicates in both my primary key as well as my foreign key through which will perform a generate a cartesian product which is simply nothing but a cross join a product is always the total number of rows that is generated out of joining two tables if i if my first table has five rows and the second table has five rows it is simply 5 into 5 which will give us 25 line items so this is what these are the different types of joins that we need to know close this perfect so let's join two data sources and see how does it actually work i'm going to data sources i'm connecting connecting to an excel where i have multiple tables when i have multiple tables i need to create one final table using joins so i'll pick property order product where i have three different tables now as a mission to open this let's wait for the machine to load all the three tables once it is loaded i'll show you how to perform various types of joins it is taking too much of time uh, than the usual ones let me close all my applications perfect so it is loaded the table excel file and it will show us the three different tables that are there inside this particular excel file look here order details products and the property information now i wanted to create one table which will have all the products name product information and the property information if i see the orders details table this order details table will not have the product name nor the property name but it will still have the id for us to map it with the other uh, tables so once you see this once you click on this icon that will pop up here dynamically you will be able to view the data with headers in it now uh, let me see the headers yeah now we have data here 
perfect so if you see here we have product information we have property information we have quantity and we have order id so basically it will tell me what is the number of uh, number of quantities that has been sold for this particular order id which was sold on a particular date product that was sold product id is given we have property id also in which area was this sale happened so these are the information that are available in this table but i wanted to know what is the property when i say property i wanted to know the name of the property name of the product and yeah that, these are the two things that we need to map how do i map it first i have to see what my products table is having my products table will have product id and the price for each and every product if you see the order details in order details we do not have any price or number of sales so how do we create sales using this data set quantity into price will give us the sales then we have property information in property information we will have in which state and city does this sale happen now how do i collate all these three different information into one final table on which i can perform any data analysis now first what i'll do is i will drag order details into it as soon as i drag and drop here what tableau does is tableau will read the data there and show us the different types of it will show us the different types of connection that are available and lets us uh, uh, see the data now i would like to see only the first 10 records this is just for viewing purpose this has nothing to do with subsetting the data maybe i'll sh i'll see only five so see here we have six rows here in the six rows i have all the product uh, ordered information now i will join products with orders see here as soon as i drag and drop here uh, tableau is asking me whether you wanted to join this or not so i'll simply drag it here as soon as i drag it here the machine will show me how it can it is joined see here there is a relationship that is created now i'll just click on this uh, as soon as i click on this it tells me edit relationship option in this edit relationship option first thing is order details table is there and products table is there in order details table what are the columns that are present in product table what are the columns that are present we know for a fact that we need only common column between both the tables to join them the common column between both the tables are product id so we will choose product id only which is already chosen by the machine if in case it is not choosing you can choose you can also perform joining on more than one field also however we don't have any common field to join in this case so i'll simply close this then to improve the performance see here there are several things that we can actually do one is a cardinality another one is a referential integrity we'll talk about referential integrity in a minute but what happens with cardinality is it asks you whether you whether the join that you are trying to perform is a many to many join or a, a one to many join now we know for a fact that in our product table what we have is a one to many one one uh, one instance of each and every product now let me show you the product table one more time you will see the product id will not be duplicated see here one two three four five we will have 94 rows we will have 94 products so there is no duplicate in product id so it is a many to one join in orders table we have multiple uh, selections so orders table will have many uh, instances of product id whereas in the product table i will have only one instance of it in that case referential integrity asks me what type of match you wanted to retrieve all records matching or only this only some records that are matching it will uh, almost uh, not all the records i think all the records will match because every order will have a product information so i'll simply change this into all records match so what happens is this case also all records match in this case it will perform a cleanly one to many join or many to one join in both the cases it is totally fine because real in real time the data will be uh, either one of the table will have duplicates one of the table will not have duplicates that way performing one to many or many to one should be a good choice to perform a joining operation now as soon as you see here what is the type of join that we are doing here we did not specify what is the type of join that we need to do here the machine directly takes or tries to create a normal join a normal join in this case is a 
the inner join is what it what it is trying to perform in this particular case so what we can simply do is we can uh, uh, we can you know try to uh, what i would say uh, that's it yeah that is all we need to do here so when we have this cardinality given connection that's all we need to do once it is done it automatically joins both these things uh, you know together then the next thing is uh, if i wanted to join these two tables i have to join property information also i will keep property information here where it will perform a join with order details only in order details we have uh, you know we have this uh, what i would say the property id information in products data we do not have property information so we cannot join property and products together we can join only orders and the property together in this case the order details here is property id here also it is taking property id that's pretty much is what we need to do and again we need to change the type of join that we need to do uh, here it will be in property information it is only one one time uh, every property is listed whereas in uh, uh, order uh, order details multiple times property might have been listed here also we will have a all records match because all the records in uh, order detail have property information that's all i have to do i'll go to sheet one now you will be able to see all three tables that are coming from the same excel file so we joined all these three tables with the help of joins but here it works as a relationship using uh, the concept is using one to many or many to one where the data is uh, you know uh, produced appropriately now say for an example i wanted to know what is the order id we will choose this i did so what is the order id and what is the product id that was sold and what is the property in which it is sold but i wanted to know what is the product name before property id and in which city these products were sold so the order id is 2 the product id is 54 the name of the product is chest of drawers and the property id is 15 in chicago so basically uh, chest of drawers have been sold in chicago let's see the quantity I'll just have it in text quantity is two quantities have been sold we do not know what is the price for each and every quantity here so i'll just keep sum of price it will give me 150 for two instances of chest of drawers what if i remove the quantity let's see the price is 150 only which is for one quantity then what we'll have to do is we'll have to calculate the sales how do i calculate the sales i'm just keeping it here like this so i would like to keep price and quantity perfect so what i'll do is i will uh, create a new column which will show me sales which is simply nothing but price into quantity i'll just multiply price into quantity which will tell me what is the price for what is the sales that happened by selling one quantity of large plant three quantities of uh, towel rack three quantities of permanent markers how much is the overall sales that we were able to generate by selling so many number of quantities the quantities and price have been given so i just multiplied price against quantity to generate the overall sales per order id so this was not available in the uh, raw, raw data raw information we don't have sales information but we only have sales and quantity information through which now we are able to generate the sales information and understand the data better perfect so that is pretty much what we need to learn in terms of joins in tab let me delete all of them and um, yeah i'll just clean the sheet i'll go to data source let me keep all these three tables let us go to the deck and see what is there next. So left join, right join, uh, inner join and outer join. Let's see what is next. This is left join and uh, we have uh, 
right john so uh, i am using the latest version uh, not even the latest version i'm using one la second last latest version so i'm using 2020.2 i believe in tableau but there is another version also 2020.3 uh where you can see uh the same type of relationship rather than what what we are seeing in the screenshot is a little older version it is 2019.3 uh so when i'm using 2020.3 the interface differs but the performance does not differ it remains the same waterfall chart perfect that brings us to the end of uh, uh joints now let's see how to create waterfall charts in tableau creating a waterfall chart is very very vital in real time because it lets us understand how how uh, you know from one point of uh, maybe from january say for an example from january how my uh, sales is increasing or decreasing whether it is increasing or it is decreasing if it is increasing or decreasing in which month it is increasing in which month it is decreasing how it is increasing and how it is decreasing all those informations can be understood with the help of uh, a waterfall chart a waterfall chart can be created through several ways let us try creating a waterfall chart first in tableau it cannot be created directly this is a custom chart so we need to create with the help of uh, you know we need to do some manipulation in the data to create the uh, this particular chart let me close this Okay, perfect perfect so let's see the data first how does it how does it look uh let's keep first let's create sales sales is basically price into quantity that's it So we have sales information across months let me put it on months in the row shelf i'm dragging order date order date is by default aggregated at a year level but i would like to see it at a month level so i'll choose this month uh, i think we have two years of information maybe i can choose only this this way we'll have 12 months then what i'll do is i will simply put the sales into view as soon as i put the sales uh, double click on sales what happens is sales directly came into the mark shelf with a text on it so it will be shown as numbers i don't want to uh, show them as numbers let me create a simple bar chart out of it okay we have a simple bar chart starting from january to uh, december in both the years okay so in this case what i can do is i can first convert uh, this into a gun chart i can simply convert this into a gun chart maybe i'll show you the way it is actually differing then i'll show you how uh, then we can convert this into gun chart so what i'll do is i will ask the machine to show me the running total uh, for this i'll come to quick table calculation i will ask the machine to show me the running total so what happens is the machine will try calculating the numbers one month at a time and then it will accumulate the previous month's value with the current month value and add it then it adds in march it will give you march february and january in april it will give you all the last four months in may it will give you all the last five months like that it will give you now i'll simply convert this into a simple gun bar where it looks very similar to a um, uh, you know step by staircase chart so what i'll do is I'll now create another calculated field which will give me uh, a place to uh, I'll simply create a calculation called calculation itself and then I'll simply convert this into minus sales so what uh, negative sales so what happens is there is a gap between each and every line item right so to cover this gap what I'll do is I will cal ask the machine to calculate the difference between them with the help of minus and then directly put this into uh the size of the bar chart looks like most of the months have generated very similar uh sales maybe let me see if a uh, machine has generated drastic uh you know uh, in quantity because we cannot see the differences visually i would like to see that in um now this also doesn't help me 
I will see for quantity. Let's see for quantity. Let me put this into a bar a line chart. Not so very helpful, but very similar to price only. Okay, this also will not be seen visually very, uh, it will not also give us a good depiction. But here, if you see here, this bar is actually a larger than the previous ones. So what we can do is we can work on the size to increase this, which will create more of a, uh, you know, more of a, uh, this one. A waterfall type of thing and then I can you know as a machine to discard or remove the uh, table calculation yeah oops oops the second I'll simply clear this table calculation that way it will become the normal ones we will not show anything else in this case the Gantt bar is also being viewed as a uh, bar chart only because of the uh, this because of uh, you know the tool tip uh, because of the size that we created to fill in the gap so what I'll simply do is I'll keep this as a visualization control Z yeah this is a waterfall chart if you see the visualization this looks very similar to this but here the data is little you know different from each other hence it shows in different ways but what if i wanted to show the data in uh, in which is in a very good format this is how your far, uh, waterfall chart will look like you need to first drag your measure into row shelf and whatever dimension in which you wanted to show the values we can show it at that level maybe i'll try to show it at uh, different property state very less information I have in this table yes but if you see yeah this is actually a good depiction this actually makes more sense look at this we have we have a chart which actually uh, you know increases and decreases based on the place now I can also color this by dragging sales into color shelf if I drag the sales into color shelf in these two States, California and Virginia looks like we have performed really good sales various in terms of uh, what I can do is I can just show the month of sales sorry value of sales rather than the calculated ones look at this in the month of California and in the in sorry in the state of California and in the state of Virginia we have really good amount of sales 53,000 and 54,000 sales in all the other states we have only very constantly 25,000 26,000 30,000 30,000 is slightly dark shaded than the rest of the ones but in almost all the states the values are very similar hence the bar sizes also looks very similar but eventually when the data differs the bar also increases or decreases and displays you the difference between other uh, you know other dimension other members in the dimension in this case we can see that the last washington also have generated 26,595 only looks like my sales have been increasing for a while but if i wanted to see what is the overall sales that have generated among across all the uh, states i'll simply remove the uh, uh, value that i generated uh, that i placed in the marks shelf and simply enable the label here which will tell me overall i have generated 5 lakh 33394 dollars as sales in both the years uh, in two years combined across all the states this is my information looks like california and texas uh, sorry virginia have contributed more <laughs> This is what a waterfall chart. This is how a waterfall chart looks like. If the data varies, we can also show this something like this. Yeah. Then what we can have is the next chart. Let's go on to the next chart. What is the next chart here? A donor chart. A very 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 important chart uh, in real time in in the professional world because every single report will have uh, a donor chart without any issues i'll simply write a donor chart again a donor chart is something that we that cannot be created by um, by the show me pin all this advanced charts that we are going to see today cannot be created directly from the uh, uh, 
show me pain that we have here it actually takes uh, a little effort from the regular ones that we create and then uh, we need to modify few parameters to uh, generate things that is how we can create our work with a you know advanced charts now we can create a pie chart if you see here we can create a pie chart but we cannot create a donut chart let's see how to create a donut chart how many product categories are there super five product categories are there and what is the overall sales that we have i would like to remove this and remove keep the sales in sales looks like furnishings and public areas have uh, a six digit number various housekeeping maintenance and office supplies have a five digit number i'll just choose a pie chart here what i'll do is i'll increase the size to increase the size i'll use control right side and control upside i can increase the size looks good to me then what i'll do is i will double click on the empty row shelf here in the empty row shelf i'll simply double click on uh, double click and it opens a pill for me in this pill i'll just give zero that's it again double click give zero what this operation does is it simply duplicates the existing chart if you see here i have only one mark shelf but see what happens when i create one more zero here it creates two mark shelves now see here there are two elements in the mark shelf now what i'll go is do is i'll go to the second mark shelf remove all the elements basically from this chart i would like to remove all the color and the slicing once i remove this this becomes a gray chart gray type of chart and then i'll decrease the size a little once i decrease the size a little what i'll do is i'll choose this white option here and then right click here to dual axis it what i've done is i've reduced the size change the color into uh, change the background into white i'll remove anything in the tool tip also then i'll just right click on the chart press dual axis as soon as i press dual axis it creates a uh, donut chart for us so the donut chart is simply nothing but we are masking one chart behind another chart through which we will be able to create a donut chart that is the idea here nothing else so i'll format it simply right click deselect show header and we looks like we have borders and grid lines i don't want borders so i'll go to borders and uh, keep row divider and column divider to none then i'll go to grid lines in grid lines i'll just remove the zero lines as well once i remove my entire sheet is empty i'll come to the first chart now sum of zero where i'll see if there is anything in the tool tip i don't want anything in the tool tip just give okay then looks okay to me perfect so in this case what i'm going to do is i will add more information here so people can understand what is this chart is about now we do not know what color is what even though we have a legend here keeping it inside the chart helps it better so what i'll do is i will drag product category into label first as soon as i drag product category into label it tells me what is the category and each color is representing now i wanted to know what is the overall sales happened so i'll drag sales into label in the second chart so it tells me this but what i'll do is i'll click on label go to the text editor here and then simply format it like this overall sales then apply perfect maybe i'll increase the size a little more okay overall sales it says 5,33,394 dollars now we have housekeeping furnishing and all those things we do not know the values that each and every category is contributing to the business furnishing might be contributing to 40 percentage of my business public areas might be contributing to 20 percentage of my business but we do not know how can i calculate the percentage contribution what i'll do is i'll go to the first chart in the first chart i'll drag sales into text it gives me the text value well, sorry the sales value furnishing has sold for uh, furnishings have earned the sales of two lakh twenty six thousand dollars public areas is this much uh, office supplies is this much maintenance and housekeepings are this much but how can i know the percentage so what i'll do is i'll right click on the sales here 
choose quick table calculation and then choose percentage of total if i choose percentage of total it automatically tells me how much percentage of share does each category is contributing to the overall sales so uh, 43 percentage of the overall sales value is contributed by furnishings uh, 25 percentage of the overall sales is contributed by public areas looks like office supplies is not working really well and housekeeping is also not working well other areas uh, seems to be working fine so as a business owner i would like to focus on office supplies this is how we can create a donor chart as well i'll just show both the charts that we just created in the view so if you see here it creates a, a waterfall chart for us from the top it flows right or waterfall is very similar to uh, from the top of something it flows down so that is exactly the same thing from the top it flows down but with values accumulating at a uh, at a particular dimension in this case state is the dimension then we have a donut chart which will tell us what is the percentage contribution about a few categories or classification towards the business let's go on to the deck and see what's the next one funnel chart a funnel chart is a very important chart and it's not an easy um, uh, you know uh, chart that can be created you have to work around uh, to create uh, this particular chart as well okay let's create a funnel chart as well to create a funnel chart in tableau uh, there is again there is no straightforward charts that can be created as funnel so first thing what we have to do is we have to decide what is the dimension and measure that we would like to show so i would like to show uh, product name product names are too much i believe 94 products are there we don't want so many um perfect we have 18 um, uh, property property states so 18 seems to be a decent number i would like to see the sales on each and every uh, cities okay but again the problem here is the data is very you know not a problem but the data is very similar to each other that way we will not be able to see a good pattern so i'll remove property uh, state and see property city i believe everything will be same uh, this is also very similar to what we have but at least this is a little varying from property state then let me see if i can play with this this is the only option that i have in product names what i'll do is i will keep only the top 10 or maybe top 20 i'll talk about filters we will talk about filters later i'll keep top 15 yes perfect so we have uh, sales from each and every product for the for top 15 and then the data is distributed like this so what i'll do is first i will sort the data in ascending to descending order first that is what i have to do then what i'll do is i will create negative sum of sales When I say negative sum of sales, what it will do is it will give me give me the opposite of whatever view that we currently have. So what I'll do is I will keep that before the existing one. So we will be able to create a very type of funnel chart. Then uh, once the data is sorted properly, I'll right click on the chart as the machine not to show the header. Right click again, format this and then go to the grid lines and remove everything that we have. And then I'll go to grid lines also. In grid lines as well, I'll remove almost all the elements. That way our chart will be nice and clean. Um, yeah, we have the product and we have the information and the chart. Look at this now. This does not tell us. Uh, uh, you know it, it is of two charts but what we have done is we have created two charts only one with positive value another I just substituted that value with uh, a negative so what happens is it will give me the value in the negative range so when I uh, kept two charts and removed the um, you know removed or formatted all the grid lines now it will look like one chart only for the user now what we can do is we can show what is the overall value at one particular end so I'll go here 
and then ask the machine to show the values also so it will tell what is the value that bed uh, king size bed has earned as sales what is the value that uh, uh, you know double bed has earned or something now i can change the color of the charts to make it look good and then we can format this also a little thus because this doesn't seem to be uh, very bright so i'll just keep this full black i don't want to see the header here right click hide fields here i don't want to see this also high title and then put it in full screen and see how the data is distributed it looks like a funnel right if we have more information in this chart we will have funnel only so i'll see what happens when i do uh, add multiple values to this see here it looks like a funnel chart only it looks like a funnel in the top it is very wide and then it you know it keeps shrinking from size to size so this is how exactly we can create a funnel chart as well so what we have seen so far is we have created a waterfall chart and you know we know how to create a waterfall chart then we worked on creating a donor chart a donor chart is very very vital even waterfall charts are something that we very rarely create in professional world but donor chart is a mandate chart in almost all the reporting uh, reports that we will roll out so uh, donor chart is a mandate one and a funnel chart funnel chart also helps us beautify the information and see what category or what dimension that we are trying to plot is contributing or performing better than the other ones it is like putting it in a descending order only but in a pattern um this is what we can do in a funnel chart a lollipop chart and a scatter plot okay is there any other charts that we have to see discuss plot first see let's see lollipop chart okay. a lollipop chart also becomes very important or becomes really nice when you create the right type of chart so what i'll do is i'll try to have a, a what i can have what can have product categories only five categories are there in this which is a very less amount but that's okay let's keep property cd in this case add a pales to this and create a bar chart out of it so to create a uh, lollipop chart what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a lot of formatting to make it look beautiful so first thing that i'm going to do is the size of the bars are very thick so what i'll do is i'll click on the size decrease the size as thin as i can this looks good to me and then what i'll do is i will duplicate some of sales one more time since i have duplicated it it has created the second chart so what i'll do is i'll go to the second chart here change the bar chart into a circle chart okay in this case i'll increase the size of the circle the circles doesn't seem to be very nice so what i can do is i can choose shape where is it yeah in shape i can choose a circle which will be more better than the ones that we have then what i'll do is i'll simply right click the chart in the second chart and select dual axis and go to the first chart and change the first one into bar chart in this case what happens is by default it tries to automatically get the uh, you know chart in one particular dimension which is um uh, you know which shows us a, a type of a bar, lollipop only but here the bars are still inside the circle so what i'll do is i will change the circle into a filled one that way we will not be able to show what is uh, whether it where it is actually actually connecting this becomes a lollipop chart but this is not done unless or until you format it properly so i'll just put it in entire view right click format go to row shell from column shelf row divider column divider go to grid lines in grid lines you can remove everything yes but the colors are not very good so uh, it, visualization is all about colors right so what i'll do is i'll first go and change the size color of the bar into a lighter color 
and change the circle into a darker color than the existing ones this seems to be okay or this seems to be okay or this one this one now for me this seems okay exactly this seems okay to me so again now what i'll do is i will drag sales into text here so it will show me the text but i would like to see it on the top of everything so i would like to keep it in the middle up 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 it's exactly and then i would like to show some of sales in thousands only so what i'll do is i'll right click default properties number format i'll change this into currency custom and then i'll change this into united states english custom two dollars we would like to show display units thousands that's it and the size of the text is too big i don't want to have such a big text so i'll keep this into seven which is smaller yeah if i put this into a full visualization we can understand the distribution pretty much better looks like kansas city and uh, chicago has performed really better than the other cities that we have so it is all about uh, trying to visualize the information in a more convenient way that the user does not get distracted the first and foremost rule in the visualization is it should not distract your eyes it has to be very simple it has to be conveying information just by seeing the chart the largest lollipop that we have is from kansas city which means that we have huge amount of sales in uh, kansas city it is a very similar type of interpretation to your bar chart only but bar charts are boring literally boring everyone everywhere you go it's a bar chart or a line chart rather than creating a bar chart or a line chart directly we can create something like this through which we will be able to uh, understand the business or understand the data in a more uh, visual uh, consumption that is the idea behind lollipop chart the next one is a scatter plot this is lollipop let's go on to scatter plot works on two numerical columns so i would like to see how quantity and the sales have gone hand in hand together so as soon as i try creating this chart it tells me uh, it, it shows me only one value because the problem here is we have everything aggregated so to create a uh, scatter plot i'll simply as a machine to de disaggregate it what is not working i'll just create a this is a scatter plot only right click and scan right click here also doesn't work it should be a circle and then uh, it has to be disaggregated and i'm not sure why disaggregation is disabled in this case it you we just need to select deselect disaggregate measures option here through which it automatically gives us information in uh, at a you know at a disaggregated level i believe it's because i have had this now it still doesn't work so you need, just need to deselect this i'm not sure in this version why it is this uh, it is grayed out it is not available for selection for me but eventually when, when we, whenever we wanted to create a scatter plot we just need to uh, plot two dimensions sorry two uh, uh, two measures in the row shelf or in column shelf and then we just need to disaggregate it when i disaggregate it it automatically becomes this maybe i am not showing it at a particular dimension just a second maybe we'll show it at a product name level yes then also doesn't work but yeah the scatter plot here can be understood with the help of uh, one particular dimension which is product name so it tells you how the quantity and prices prices increased but rather than price i would like to show sales 
so this is how uh, you know quantity and price have been uh, distributed but let's remove the axis and deselect axis to start from a particular place so that it will look better than the existing one okay I don't want the function to include zero that way the data gets distributed properly then yeah here also I don't want machine to include zero so we have this information then what we can do is we can format this again and then you know try creating something which will make more sense so in this case what I'll do is I will right click this or maybe I'll uh, put this in full view I click this format this I'll remove the headers there is no divider here so I'll try to see what are the uh, grid lines that I can remove just to help the data uh, you know present in a clean format I'll do the same at a column level. Okay, maybe only axis rulers we can keep. Full dark. Perfect, looks like a chart and then we don't want to see the header. Oops. I would like not to have the title here. Here also I would like not to have the title. Then what I can do is I can drag this into color shelf. Once I drag this into color shelf, it automatically gets adjusted or it, it shows us how the data is distributed. Since we have more products here, let's not keep product as color. I would like to categorize this into groups of category, five different colors I would like to see for each and every category. So what we can do is we can decrease the opacity through which it will make a little good appearance altogether. Yes, it looks better than the uh, original information. So if I wanted to know how, the, how furnishing is distributed, I can just click on the legend which will show me furnishings. If I choose maintenance, it will show me only maintenance. If I choose housekeeping, the same. Same happens with office supplies and public areas. And we can control each and every color if we want to have. Uh, say for an example, I would like to assign blue teal for everything. I'll assign this and apply. That way, your, uh, the way it looks becomes uh, really nice but the problem with scatter plot is you will not be able to understand the granularity of the distribution granularity of the data there might be multiple uh, you know uh, multiple cases multiple uh, uh, gra uh, multiple what I would say data points for each and every dimension that you are trying to access so that way uh, it, it also it, it helps us only in understanding the way the data is distributed at a particular dimension across two measures so what measures we have taken we have taken sales against quantity so we see here as the quantity is increasing the sales is also increasing and uh, but however we do not have very good amount of sales when the quantity is very high so here the number of quantities that we have sold in the public areas is 153 but however the sales that we have generated is only for three thousand three thousand dollars so this is how we can take the help of advanced charts like the ones that we have learned so far to understand the business. The last one is a box plot. Okay, box plot is used for uh, identifying outliers. Let me plot um property city and sales i would like to see if there are any sales that are over performing or under performing in that case i can simply choose this box and viscous plot directly and looks like there is a uh, there is well, there looks like there is one city that is performing outside 
above average the one that we are seeing here is the average line here this is becomes a below average line so what happens is any city below this uh, inverted t becomes below average performer whereas any t that is any city that is greater than this t becomes above average performance so that is how we can understand a box flood let us again format this to make it look good i don't want any of the access to be present here i just don't want this i don't want this to be present anywhere else as well fit into the entire view maybe i'll try swapping this no standard um i'll show header i don't want the machine to have starting from zero so i'll exclude zero here we have a really good chart okay perfect so what i'll do is i'll right click this i don't want this so now we can go ahead and format this right click format i will remove both my row dividers and column dividers go to grid lines and play with all the row shelf and the column shelf elements perfect so this is pretty much is what we have and uh, okay let me color this i would like to color this by i would like to change the color of this into orange okay i think color orange okay then we can uh, format the gray uh, box box whiskers also i'll right click see if this is making sense this one this color it doesn't look so good so i'll change this again this is kind of fine okay in terms of border i'll make a thickish border out of it i will have thick borders and whiskers also i will have a very thick whisker <laughs> This is one type of uh, format. I'm just trying to keep it. Uh, um, I'll keep it modern only. That way it becomes easy for us. So there is only one city that is actually performing better than uh, every other city. You see here, Chicago is very close to above average. New York is the least, the city with least, uh, uh, you know, sales. Orlando and other cities, if you see here, they are in the median. The one that you are seeing inside this box becomes the median sales and then you have upper risk or lower risk values also then you have uh, Kansas City uh, outperforming all the other cities that we have so this Kansas City employees will be rewarded with some bonus or commissions or something so just an understanding of business that is the idea here so anyone who's over performing will be above this T here anyone who's performing poorer will be below this inverted T this is the idea behind box plot as well now let's see from the first everything a waterfall chart it simply takes the running total or the running uh, average i can show a running average also of a particular measure against a dimension to help you understand whether your business is growing or it is declining say for an example in oregon if we had very less values of sales what happens is we might have uh, this bar being lesser than the uh, previous bars or below this bar that way we will be able to easily catch whether ohio is performing better or not but fortunately our business is performing really well in almost all the uh, states and virginia and california is performing better than the other states just by seeing the size of the bars that we have here as well as their values by seeing this we will be able to understand what is the overall sales that we were able to achieve in the entire business as well during a particular time period so it looks like five lakh thirty three thousand dollars have been earned in the entire time period then talking about donut chart see here 
A donut chart is simply a categorization chart that helps us understand what is the percentage share of each and every chart, each and every component or member inside a particular dimension. Uh, this is something that we will use only when we have less number of members in a particular dimension. So in this case, product category has only five members. So we can use this product category chart, uh, this donut chart to understand the distribution of the data. Then the next thing is a funnel chart. The funnel chart simply helps us understand the distribution from in descending order. Uh, again, what happens is this, this is a pattern through which we can understand what are the best performing products and what are the worst performing products. Or if there is anything that is very stable for a long time, how can I also understand it? Then a lollipop chart, a simple alternative to uh, a, a bar chart. Uh, where again you can see the data distributed across a particular dimension you just need to make sure that it is properly formatted so it will not look uh, you know uh, disturbing, disturbing to your eyes next is a scatter plot scatter plots are always used to understand the distribution whether uh, a particular portion of the distribution has high density or high volume of data points or other data other uh, other portion of the data points or data set have uh, uh, lesser or higher number of distributions it is purely basis the distribution uh, that we can uh, take help from scatter plot the last chart is a box plot chart wherein we can understand how uh, uh, you know how or whether uh, some of my dimensions some member of my dimensions are outperforming or underperforming my uh, underperforming my business or even if it is an employee in, in an organization you can give scores to your uh, uh, you know employees uh, employee A is performing really well we will give him 10 out of 10 employee B might be performing uh, not very not so very well he might be given 5 out of 10 all those informations so in that case what happens is we will be able to perform we, uh, once we plot the box plot we will be able to see who are the above average performers who are the below average performers and what is the average in both the thresholds average thresholds in both the ends in the positive end as well as in the negative end also helps us understand uh, to identify opportunities in terms of business and then I think that's the end of the advanced chart section let's see if we have something else a scatter plot we have seen a viscous plot we have seen perfect that brings us to the end of this class so let me quickly recap what we have learned in this class we learned about four different types of joints inner joint left joint right joint and full joint Using inner join, we can join two tables. Uh, only the matching values from both the tables will be retrieved. Whereas in a left join, the entire content from the left table will be returned, as well as the matching values from the right table. Whereas in a right join, the entire right table will be returned with the matching values from the left table. In a full join, both the values, both the tables, uh, uh, you know, the, both the contents from the tables will be returned to us. In advanced charts, we learned about several types of uh, charts, uh, starting from uh, uh, a waterfall chart, then we learned about donut chart, then again we learned about uh, 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 a funnel chart, and then box plot, a scatter plot, and a lollipop chart as well. So there are multiple types of charts that you can actually create to beautify the information. It is all about uh, you know trying to put the right type of chart for right type of data and making the business user consume the information you cannot create chart uh, create a very uh, very good looking chart and if it is not uh, you know if it is not interpretable interpretable if the user is not able to understand what the chart is trying to do then in that case that chart you creating that chart is definitely not of any use so it is very vital that we uh, make sure that we keep the charts very simple even if it is advanced charts it has to be very simple and it has to convey information to the business the primary and sole role of creating any visualization is all about uh, you know making sure the information is conveyed through minimalistic visualization which has almost all the context of the data that brings us to the end of this class please don't forget to like share and subscribe to audience call Thank you so much for joining this session. We will catch up in the next one.